Hey guys, I have a special treat for you guys here today. This is a interview from Ringo Starr of the Beatles. Now, at the time of this recording, he was in uh, Hawaii. Um, he was he wasn't with the Beatles at the time, but um, this I think this is original because of uh, certain things that are said in it. Also, it's it doesn't seem like it's edited for radio, and um, its source, uh, where, I, where I obtained this from, was uh, Ranch Records in Salt Lake City, Utah. You should check them out if you live in Salt Lake or the area. But um, his father was into radio stuff. He did, he did broadcasting and stuff like that from what he told me. So I think this was played once on the radio back then and never seen or never heard again. So I've had it for almost a year now, and I feel like... It's more, I've waited more than long enough to put this thing online. I feel like the world deserves to hear this. So, here we go. I mean, this is probably the first time anyone's really heard it in who knows how many years. You're on this? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you looking forward to getting back in the groove of things? With Can't the... wait, you know, sitting there doing nothing. Uh-huh. Well, what will be your first show with the Beatles again? In Melbourne. In Melbourne, what date? Um, Monday. Monday? Yeah. You'll be singing once again with the Beatles. Well, I won't be singing for the first week, and you, you know, so I've got to lay off for a week. You know, Sunday night here... Well, is it morning. Sunday now? No, it's Friday night, but Sunday oh, night, well, you will be Friday here, after here. Well, at the Waikiki show. Remember the full circuit show that you did from Washington, oh, D.C.? Yes. Yeah. That will be showing here Sunday night. Oh, is it? Good. Keep watching, folks. Do you plan to have a little performance or anything? When? Anything in the, in the works? No. A little performance? I don't think so. We're not playing on the little. Let's go kind of the little. No plans at all. Would you like to play on the little? Yeah. I'll play anyway, you know. Your oh, motion yeah. picture will be opening here, won't it? Uh, yeah. Um, opening this summer. Yeah. In England, it's July the 6th. Uh -huh. Will you be there for the premiere? Yes, you will. All of us. Ringo is now getting a lay. Thank you. You got a young fan there, Ringo. Ringo is now signing autographs as he's uh, getting a brief rest. Did you get any sleep at all, Ringo, on the plane? Yeah, about, about two hours, I think. It felt like two hours. Mm -hmm. You'll be uh, flying right on to Mandy and then, then Sydney. Uh, where will you uh, meet, the mess, meet the rest of the uh, Beatles? In Melbourne. Oh, oh, you're going all the way to Melbourne. Yeah. That's where you'll be performing first with them. Yeah. What have you uh, been doing since you uh, came down? Oh, just uh, convalescing? Came, since I came out? Uh, uh -huh. Out of hospital, you mean? No, yeah, out of the hospital. I, um, well, I packed and got on a plane. That's about all I did. And I've been on the plane since. There's been several rumors here, and we've, uh, in fact, called London twice on them that uh, you are planning on getting married this summer or plan to get married in the near future. A lot of rubbish. Every time we go out with a girl, they keep trying to marry us off. I wish they wouldn't, you know. It's very naughty. You know, we're allowed to have girls. Just healthy relationship, as they say. But there's no plans. You know, definitely not. You know, hey, Joe, would you get married? Well, I suppose you are, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would, yeah. <laughs> If I was in your shoes, Ringo, well, I'd do just as you're doing. Well, I would go. Play the field, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. play the field. Did you uh, get a good vacation in the Virgin Islands? Yes, very much. Marvelous, you know. Just did nothing. Did the uh, laid down. fans pursue you at all? Um, only in towns, but we didn't go to many towns. You know, we had to load up with provisions. And that was all, you know, what we used to just anchor mm -hmm. off the island, and uh, they didn't, couldn't get us. When do you expect to uh, conduct your next vacation? Uh, no idea. Any plans? Ask Brian. <laughs> oh, sorry. Next your next vacation. vacation? Oh, I don't know. I think uh, later this year, November. Perhaps. We'll take a break November. then. Hello. 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 <laughs> it's great fun, all these flowers, isn't it? First time you received a flower lay, huh? Yeah. A real Hawaiian flower lay. What um, country do you receive the most fan mail from? How are you doing? Thank you. Ringo? Gotcha. How do you like this? Who's this? Chuck? No. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Ringo is saying autograph. Yeah? <laughs> um, what country do you get the most fan mail from? You ever... uh, America. America? Uh, actually. Uh -huh. We 
all get different amounts from different places. You know, I get uh, about four fifths from America. Four fifths from America? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You uh, saying uh, I want to be your man on the the show that will be shown here Sunday night at the Waikiki yeah. Show. Do you remember much about that uh, show in Washington D.C.? It was marvelous, fantastic. It was after mm-hmm. all, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I got show. a peek of it, and it was a very exciting yeah, evening. The crowd was marvelous, and everything. You know, we just had a great time. You know. Well, it looked like you had a good time. What happened at the beginning there? Did you lose a drumstick or something? Do no. you recall? No, I don't think so. I think um, it's just going to jump. Funny when we first walked on, and then they said, "Well, you've got to play to four sides," because we're only used to playing straight out to an audience, you know. And I think, and the rostrum was a bit wobbly. I don't remember losing a drumstick. I may have done. I mm-hmm. often do. What's been your most exciting show, Ringo? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I can't tell you. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, we've done so many shows. Some shows are great. Some are. Mm-hmm. Any any awesome. one thing in your show business career that's kind of been the uh, an outstanding night or an outstanding event? Uh, the Royal Command performance was a big thing. And the first time we ever did the Palladium show, you know, every, we do things new and the bigger they are, then they're the big thing at the moment. Then we suddenly do something else and takes over. You know, you know your fans will be hearing this very shortly on Cape Boy Ringo. Would you like to say aloha to everyone in Hawaii? Aloha. <laughs> How are you doing? Everyone in Hawaii? Aloha. Hello? Hello? Okay. Very good, Ringo. We're going to try our point. Here we do a bit. Ringo, you are acquainted with Peter and Gordon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long have you known them? Are oh, they from Liverpool? No, London. They're from London. I've known them about uh, 18 months now. How did it come to be that uh, they're one of the first groups in England to record a Beatles song the Beatles hadn't recorded? No, not one. Well, um, okay. well, I don't know, you know, they just just happens that way and it's old. But they've got a good sound anyway. Yeah. You know, I like the sound. We all like the sound. Uh-huh. Good records, you know. Nice beats and everything. It's the World Without Love is one of the big hits. Yeah, it's great. Over. It's a nice song, but they do a good, you know, they do a good. Ringo, do you have any favorite, uh, like, movie stars or singing stars? Four new ones. Huh? What about a singing star? Um, oh, there's too many singing stars. Mm-hmm. You know, Chuck Jackson, James Ray, Marvin Gaye. You know, the Shirelles, all them crowd. Could I ask you a question? I, you don't have to answer, but if you had your choice of a movie star that you could work opposite in a motion picture, who would you choose? No idea, I don't know. Just a pretty one? Uh, you know, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> Moving out to where the fans are assembled, shouting, We want Ringo. And uh, I guess they spotted us, you know, we'll be just uh, a few feet in front of Ringo, and he was just about 10 yards behind us, coming around the corner. And uh, there are signs up, Ringo, we love Ringo. Here he comes. Here he is. There he is. Well, you can hear the background. Ringo Star has been spotted. Just the girls with cameras. There he is. Here comes Ringo Star. We're shouting Ringo Star fans. And now Ringo is going out to get a little bit closer to those fans, and we'll see what happens. All right, we're now moved on to another paneling. We're now in the customs area proper. And again, fans are lying 10, 15, up 20 deep, all shouting Ringo Star as you can hear them. And Ringo's walking along, waving at all the fans. Ringo. 
Did you expect to walk him like this, Ringo? Pardon? Did you expect anything like this? Oh, come on, hey, you're did, you, did you expect anything? No, nothing like this. We're just flying through. It's marvelous. That glass is bending, Ringo. A JAL flight has just disembarked here, and the people are coming through customs, and they're looking in bewilderment. What is happening? Ringo has just walked the entire length of the customs area. Uh, the only thing separating he between uh, a few thousand people is a very thin sheet of glass. And we were quite concerned at one time that that glass would, would, would bend a little bit too far, but luckily it held all is well. And Ringo has been most gracious. He's over shaking hands with a couple of uh, fellows who work here with the airport. Ringo, you know, you made a lot of, a lot of your fans happy tonight. Uh, well, uh, it's my pleasure, you know. They're keeping us in business, and I, I would well, like to say, fans, and, then, you know, yeah. and that was marvelous because you know you could sort of go and see them without any sort of bother. It's nice because sometimes it's a bit dodgy if, if they're in the open. Yeah, they don't mean any harm, but uh, you know, if about six or seven thousand want to touch you all at the same time, it gets a bit rough. <laughs> What's the closest uh, scrape that you've had with possibly either the Beatles getting hurt or a lot of fans getting hurt? Um, well, I think. The dangerous bit is when we're in the car and they throw themselves on the car, you know, because easy going to the wheel and it always frightens us a bit. But we're, we've been lucky up to now. I think we've only had one foot <laughs> and a policeman. They always get in the way. <laughs> no, they don't. They're doing a grand job. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, but that's great. Yeah. They're still back there yelling Ringo. Oh. How many rings have you got in your fingers tonight, Ringo? Only four. Only four? Yeah. <laughs> one wristwatch? One wristwatch, one bracelet. Yeah. Ringo, uh, as I said, you've made thousands of your fans extremely happy in Hawaii tonight. I know you're very tired after a long trip and you've got many miles to go. But uh, and we'd like to say on behalf of them that you're welcome back on our islands anytime, Ringo. Thanks a lot, and I hope to come back. You know, it's marvelous. It's warm now. What time is it? About two in the morning, isn't it? That's what you want today, eh? The warm weather. We had our summer yesterday in England. <laughs> it's an English joke, you know. One day of summer. Not to worry. Ringo is now uh, again boarding the giant Qantas jet, City of Hobart, which will uh, take off shortly and carry Ringo Starr to join his mates in Australia. Ringo's now standing up waving. The fans can see him. Some of them can. Ringo's be back with a few ladies. Goodbye, Ringo. Come back soon. Aloha. This is Art Thurston. I'm on board the Qantas flight from San Francisco to Honolulu, and on board we've got that wonderful personality, Mr. Ringo Starr. He'd like to say a few words to the people of Hawaii here. He's just, I must apologize for me waking him up. He slept uh, soundly from San Francisco, but has had a pretty hectic trip as it's now about 10 o'clock in the morning uh, London time. Is that right? Yeah, well. 10 to 9. 10 to 9 in London time. Feels like 10 o'clock. And he yeah. has that little sleep. So he will now say a few words Ooh, to the people. Ooh, you ask me questions, because I get stuck if I have to say a few words. Hi. Hello, Hawaii. Hello, Hawaii. How say hello to Tom Muffet. Hello, Tom Muffet. What time we call him? Uncle Tom Muffet, no. In Cape Boy Radio. Okay. No, we can not allow. No promotion. No problem. I'm sorry, but the, the people in Hawaii. I don't know. They're always trying to get promotion, fellas. You keep moving the mic. Sorry. Do you want me to talk? Well, um... You, this is your first trip to Hawaii, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, we're not staying long, are we? Forty-five minutes. Uh, we won't see much of it. And it's now what time? One in the morning or something? That's right. You've got some wonderful fans here. Oh, in good. Hawaii. Yeah. They're really the Beatle fans are here, and they're, they're waiting here at the airport for you. Oh, and, uh, where are they? They're across here, and this is international, and they can't get through there. Oh. So, uh, really, uh, without taking from your time and uh, waiting at this time oh. here, just say hello to the people of Hawaii, and that's okay. it. Okay. Hello to the people of Hawaii. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Keep going. going. Right. This is Tom Moffat speaking from the uh, Honolulu International Airport, standing just about eight feet now from uh, Ringo Starr and uh, Beatle manager Brian Epstein. Ringo is looking down, and we're uh, far removed from the crowd that is assembled outside, so the crowd has not yet caught uh, sight of Ringo. Ringo has just stepped off the Qantas jet. It's about, uh, well, I would say, ten steps up on the, uh, the runway at the gangplank. And he's uh, just uh, talking with uh, Cape Boy correspondent Morgan Montague. 
And now Mr. Jackson of Qantas Airways has joined the discussion. Ringo is looking about. He hasn't smiled yet. Uh, Mr. Jackson is pointing down now. Photographer is taking a picture. Ringo just smiled. He just grinned. He looks quite well. He, uh, of course, has been quite ill. And that is why he is joining his uh, mates a little bit late in Australia. All right, Morgan Montague is pointing down this way. Ringo Starr is facing us. Still about standing uh, 10 steps away from us, directly above where we're at the uh, bottom step of the loading ramp of the Qantas Airways giant jet. All right, there's still a discussion going on. Ringo is dressed in a uh, dark suit, continental ivy, of course, with a uh, chartreuse shirt, white collar, dark blue tie. He's now uh, the only one standing there talking to Morgan Montague, a tape boy correspondent. Uh, Morgan, unfortunately, does not have his tape recorder with him, so we'll try and pick up uh, a few words with Ringo as he comes down the steps. Morgan Montague and Ringo Starr are... Uh, sure. Sure. Well, I've actually never listened to that whole thing before, so I don't know if something is on the other track or what else is on the, the tape. Because as you can see, there's more on the tape. I'm going to flip the uh, tracks real quick. Or not flip, but unmute this one. <coughs> uh, obviously nothing. Oh, that's the wrong one. My bad. This has something, I'll rewind it, but if not, I'm going to cut this. So as you saw, I had to cut the tape. Or, the video. Because this thing can't play as slow as I want. It's because it's something's wrong with it, it's broken. The speed knob doesn't work at all. It, it just, it's stuck on a certain speed. This thing up here, the speed fast slow, that does. Nothing down there. It doesn't work at all. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I, it's probably broken. You know, I got this machine as is with the door and this fast forward and rewind knob wasn't even there. The only reason why I keep this machine really is because of the X field. I can read multiple tracks. Now, I had to get him a second machine because um, of the speed problem on my first machine. And who would pass this up for 10 bucks? Now, with this... It also has its problems. This Ringo interview is completely invisible because it can't read the tracks right. Tracks do not line up with the head. But, um... So, there you go. It's playing at its slowest speed, and you're still hearing that way too fast. Now, I have options. Record it through a computer and then digitally slow it down. Or send this thing off to a professional so we can get some really high quality recordings of it. Um, I'm going to talk to who, the person who I feel like is the rightful owner of this. And maybe we'll just put this thing up on eBay to the highest bidder. bidder. Hopefully that's the case because... I mean, who doesn't like money? But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this long-lost interview from Ringo Starr. Thank you for watching.